Your Excellency, the President and the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, the First Lady, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellencies, Retired President, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Citizens and Friends of Kenya, Fellow Kenyans, Today we mark the end of one journey as we embark on the beginning of another. Today it can be likened to a race in ancient Greece of one legendary city running from the city of Marathon to Athens to go and announce that the Persians have been defeated and to say victory, victory, victory. On the 4th of August this year, Kenyans stood one by one in the solitude of the polling booth and voted in favor of a new national constitution. In that moment, so pleasing and yet so historic, Decades of struggle for a better future are finally rewarded. The 4th of August will go down in history as the date on which we, the people of Kenya, formed a more united nation and established the ground, groundwork for justice, unity, and the full blessings of liberty for ourselves and for ourselves. No one could have thought that out of the bitter harvest of the disputed elections and the violence that seated our people against each other just two years ago, we would be witnessing today the birth of a national unity that has included us for more than 40 years. Today, we close a long chapter in our history we put repression, exclusion, dictatorship, and heroic struggle behind us once and for all. We have opened a clean new page in our book. On that page, we begin writing the story of an equal and just society. We gather here now to ratify the pledge we make to ourselves and to the world that Kenya shall redeem herself and extend the frontiers of democracy and freedom. This freedom has endured us for more than 40 years. Each time we came close to attaining it, it slipped from our grasp. Each time we missed it, Ever greater repression seems to replace the justice result. But a time comes in the life of every nation when citizens have to choose between the status quo and the future that is full of punishment. In dedicating this supreme law, we pay our respect to those who walk this land before us, who saw its future, and who fought for protecting human for all its business. We remember Theodore Macinto, Josiah Mangi Kariuki, Jeramoto Dingo Dinga, Alexander Shinsam Arapuge, Macinto Muliro, Joda Nyona, Akawa Mukangi, Jean Marie Serone, Henry Okulu, among many others who struggle for this day to come but did not live to see. Fiona Kenneth Matiba, Charles Rubia, Martin Shikuku, Angari Madai, Jelagas Mutai, and the young Turks of the Second Liberation, to mention but a few who puts us closer to this day.
These are but a few of the Kenyan patriots who sacrificed to make today a reality. At a great risk to their lives, they challenged dictatorship. They paid great prices to liberate our country from infinity. Collectively, we owe them a debt of gratitude. In the words of the late Sir Winston Churchill, never had so many or so much to so few. We thank and honor our president, Mike Ibar, who has today signed into law what we endorse on the 4th of August. Mike Kibaki resigned from government and joined the opposition in 1992 and never looked back and worked with us step by step, facing fear gas and the pardon in order to reach where we are today. Ten years later, we led our country into a new era and towards the constitution that we now unveil. We thank the Grand Coalition Government for pulling together to deliver this critical item of our national court. We thank our members of parliament for standing firm and for ensuring that the constitution is delivered. We salute the women and the youth of Kenya the heroic participation in the rebirth of our nation. We all the gratitude with Excellency Dr. Kofi Annan, a true friend of Kenya and the team of eminent African personalities, former president of Tanzania, Benjamin Mkapa, and Madam Rasa Machel, who stood with us at our hour of the lowest moment in our history and helped us stretch our way back in eternity. We proclaim this new law to bring law to the firm belief that lasting peace and security and prosperity for all can only come if we all enjoy freedom and justice as equal. The promise of this new beginning will be challenged by our traditional enemies, corruption and negative ethnicity. We must be vigilant and stop corruption from stealing our future and negative ethnicity from weakening our nation. To those in charge of public affairs, may public service be what it is, public service and not self-service. This new beginning has marked the end of shallow political partisanship and aroused the start of mature competition among political parties. To all the people of Kenya, I say thank you for taking your destiny with your own hands. Among us today are representatives of the international community, some of whom have stood with us in good and bad times as we have continued our fight for this new law. We thank you. This constitution is our humble contribution to the culture of democracy and human rights worldwide that we represent. It is our solemn pledge that never again that the laws of our land divide and authorize the repression or the oppression of our people. I have never said this with a fuller heart. I want to say that you, the people of Kenya, have delivered this constitution. Your constitution has set us free. God bless you and God bless Kenya.